Winning is vital in any competitive sport, but the best lineups in CS get a biased assessment of their play from the community, and this in turn affects their future results. Examples are not hard to find. The Navy team was severely criticized despite winning a major, and quite high results in the current lineup. How come the suckers won the major? Well, I'm not a sucker, but it didn't work out for me to win a major. What does the KC community get high from? Of course, from discussing the game of top teams and expressing their authoritative opinions about it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone likes to share their views on players, teams, tournaments, and commentators so that as many people as possible can find out what they think about it. It's an integral part of esports and it gives fans so much fun. Everyone can have their own opinion and argue about it with other local authorities. Authorities. The top teams are special hotspots for fans to express their own thoughts and theories. And it's understandable, because the top teams competing for trophies and glory are the most visible on the stage, they appear at all major tournaments and in the playoffs, and are always on the radar. It is precisely because these teams get the most attention that they are often subjected to biased criticism. Simply put, haterism, because hating certain lineups is the ultimate high time for a lot of fans. Hi everyone, I'm Dale and today we're going to talk about the injustices that PRO players and teams have to live with and try to understand how much they deserve such a life. And before we get started, subscribe to the channel, put your like, and go. See the promo code on the screen? Don't wait for a lucky chance, luck is already on your side. Enter the promo code on our website and collect top loot from GG Drop. Have fun hunting, bro! The best squads are often at a disadvantage because they have the highest expectations, so even their successes are often ignored. Teams are given little time to play, and they are scolded almost immediately if they don't produce a winning result. Often the community focuses on the tournament taking place this week, and the broader context is ignored, and teams don't get the recognition they deserve. Their successes and achievements that are fairer to look at in the long term. Let's take the Mouse Command as an example. They were heavily criticized for their performance at IEM Dallas, with the context largely ignored. In Mouse's case, their stellar run of one second place and two trophies at as many tournaments was all but forgotten after their failure at IEM Dallas. After winning two major tournaments in one week, they stormed to the top of the HLTV rankings, displacing FaZe. Natus Vincere won a historic victory at the first CS2 major, but many people tried to downplay its significance and present it as a fluke, saying that outside of the majors, the Navis are not performing that great. Thus, it turns out that the community has no objective model for evaluating the achievements of teams. After all, in the case of the Mavs, they get heckled for one loss while ignoring their previous winning streak, while in the case of the Navis, on the contrary, their failures outside the majors are emphasized, and winning a major CW event is called luck and chance. Natus Vincere's current roster includes a few fan favorite, has been players, like Mihai I am Ivan and Alexi Alexib Virolainen, so any excuse to downplay their success at the major was instantly exploited. So it turns out that teams are evaluated in a biased manner. One might wonder how much attention is paid to the fact that Mouse is an incredibly young squad, that they are confidently moving in the right direction, and that their poor performance in Dallas was the result of a long period of near constant competitive play that had a psychological impact on them? To what extent have Nadis Vincere been recognized for finding ways to make it through a huge tournament by squeezing the hardest cards out of their opponents, or for finding the strength to recover from their losses during the major. Hype headlines were apparently more important than seeing the whole picture objectively. Of course, there's no denying that Mouse is better in studio games, and Nadis Vincere played at major above their usual level. The fact is, however, that the community reinforced or conversely ignored the context that surrounded these successes and defeats, rather than applying consistent criteria to evaluate these two teams and their accomplishments. Unrealistic expectations. It's no surprise, but there is a tendency to set completely unrealistic expectations for lineups that feature star players. Take G2. There can be no doubt that they have two of the best players in their lineup right now, namely Ilya Monesi Osipov and Nikola Niko Kovac. The organization has seen a good return from their current roster over the past 18 months, with consistent playoff appearances, two big trophies in Katowice and Cologne, and a top four major under their belt. Yet somehow G2 has managed to be one of the most criticized lineups in the upper echelons of the scene. 
Expectations for the previous G2 lineup were unrealistically high, largely due to the presence of Enzo Nessi. Yes, G2 is the home of Nico and Enzo Nessi, but the overall roster doesn't look head and shoulders stronger compared to other top teams. Nemanja Hunter Kovac is a solid player, but his first line rating is somewhere around 1.10. Rasmus Hushi Nielsen does not have a lot of stars. Neither Justin Jaquez Savage nor Nemanja Nexa Izakovic showed anything supernatural in the game. Community opinion strongly influences players and team management. When evaluated objectively, do the G2 results, three trophies, consistent top four finishes and playoffs constitute such a terrible result. However, Miro and ESY seems to think so. And G2 as an organization has clearly decided that the lineup isn't achieving the desired results, but were the harsh assessments of their previous lineup really fair? Here's what Miro and ESY had to say about the G2 season. We deserve some hate. We could have performed much better. Thus, community pressure can encourage teams to make hasty transfer decisions and players to evaluate themselves too strictly. This can then have a negative impact on results. Here's another prime example of bias. What superstar or at least a consistently stellar player does Nadis Vincere have on its roster? Where is the experience of performing on the TIR1 stage other than Alexi B and Valeri B1T Vakovsky? However, judging by the way Natus Vincere is being discussed, one would think that their major win, second place in the EPL and Blast Spring Final and regular playoff appearances are worthless. If the Natus Vincere roster is as worthless as many in the community say, why are they not surprised by the records this weak team produces? One could argue that expectations are partly based on the value and weight of the organization's name. But how relevant is this when studying the success of a particular lineup? If Natus Vincere doesn't have the players to match their legendary status as major champions, and if G2's roster is about as strong as those around them, why do we have such high expectations? Instant success or collapse? An absolute classic among all esports communities, not just CS, is to give lineups a minimum amount of time to become the greatest team of all time. Otherwise, they suck. It takes a maximum of two or three events before the community will scratch out any lineup, and there are many recent examples of this attitude. Netus Vinceri started getting heckled after just a few appearances with their European team formed in the middle of last year, and most fans have given up hope that this squad will accomplish anything by the end of the year. Liquid put together a truly international lineup, but were written off after a couple of qualifiers before they had a chance to present the results of a revamped lineup. You can find many more examples of teams getting a final grade from the community too early. Marco Snappy Pfeiffer's Ents team took a long time to build momentum before breaking through at IEM Fall 2021. Mouse have been building their current roster for a long time, dating back to their We Play Academy League days. And Eternal Fire's current roster took many months to reach the Dash 1 level. Teams are given too little time to play, and inflated expectations make players nervous and fidgety. Shadows of Great Ancestors the great past of big teams, and entire eras of their domination of the PRO scene, just as much fuel the inflated expectations of today's teams. Team Astralis, who have won many major tournaments and other dominant forces before them, have raised the bar to a level that is unattainable in the current environment. Anyone who has watched CS for a while remembers the teams that defined an era of the past. Ninjas in pajamas in the early days of CS.GO, Fnatic. Brazilians in the days of SK and Luminosity, and the most dominant team of all time Astralis. Now times have changed. The scene has strengthened and deepened. There are now more elite and world-class players to choose from, and there are a number of teams at the top with the resources needed to put together a strong roster. The competition has grown, and even the powerful lineups of Nadis Vincere and FaZe of recent times couldn't match the level of dominance demonstrated by the great teams of the past. Perhaps the G2 double in Katowice and Cologne in 2023 should be considered a very serious result. Is a year of Nadis Vincere with a major trophy and big event finals under its belt also a success? Mouse's second place finish in the LAN Arena tournament and superb passage through the ESL Pro League and Betboom Dacha in just a week should be celebrated rather than downplayed? Community has a huge influence on the decisions that are made by team management, on the psychological climate within teams, and on the motivation of individual players. And this immense power is worth using wisely and justly. And with you was Dale. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. Press your authoritative like and see you in new videos. Coolest rinks, everyone.